Hello there, Emily here. Today is going to be a Spider-Man video, so buckle in. So, my first experience with Spider-Man was actually watching the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie back when I was only three years old. And that was a really great movie, I really loved it, and I didn't understand a word of what they were saying, because I'm Danish, I grew up in Denmark, I only spoke Danish when I was three years old, but I still liked the movie. And then there were, of course, cartoons on television. There were the 90s cartoons at first, which I really loved. And then there were the spectacular Spider-Man show, which I also fin fell in love with instantly. Um, and yeah, I just really loved Spider-Man. And there was something about that character that really spoke to me on a truly deep level and I couldn't really tell you what it was at that point but there was something about this young kid having troubles with who he was and how he was going to live his life being this other thing that people would be scared of and people not seeing him as normal and him having to hide who he truly was with his secret identity of Spider-Man and Peter Parker of course and it just really resonated with me on the deepest level possible. And of course, this is because I am transgender. Um, more specifically, I'm non-binary transgender. Um, I use she, her, they, them pronouns. And yeah, um, this fact really made me resonate with Spider-Man on such a deep level because I too knew how it felt to have something so deep inside of me that I felt like I couldn't share with anybody. And I didn't even know what it was at first because I haven't always known that I was trans or non-binary. I have always had a feeling that I was different and that I didn't fit into the gendered boxes but it took me a long time to figure out who I was. And that's also okay. You don't have to know it all at once. And that's also something that Spider-Man really helped me with because a lot of the times in Spider-Man comics, it's Peter trying to figure out how to deal with stuff. And sometimes, actually most of the times, he fails at first because he hasn't had anyone that has done it before to help him and he's afraid and he's alone and as someone who is LGBT um, I can really relate to that and I feel like a lot of superheroes with secret identities really are queer coded that way. Now I will say I haven't actually watched the new Across the Spider-Verse movie yet. Um, I have heard that Gwen Stacy is really transcoded, and that does make sense to me. Um, because when I first saw Spider Gwen and read the Spider Gwen comics, I really felt seen. And not because you were trans in those, you can hit canon it that way, but just because she was a woman and had the same struggles that Peter Parker had in the Spider Man comics but it spoke to me in a deeper way because I could finally relate and it made the final small pieces of my identity click in my head. And it really helped me a lot figuring out who I was. And of course, it didn't actually make me realize that I was trans or anything, but it helped me come to terms with some personal stuff that helped me on that journey. And that's actually why I'm making this art piece of my own spider Sona, meeting some of the spider people from the Spider-Verse movie. We have, of course, Spider-Man and Spider-Man, which is Miles and Peter, but also Gwen Stacy. And um, yeah, I really love this concept of a spider Sona, um, which is just you making your own version of Spider-Man that would be if you were Spider-Man. So if you have such a spider sona, I would love to see it. Um, and um, yeah, tell me about your favorite Spider-Man moment or what Spider-Man means to you in the comments down below, because I would really like to hear it. But anyway, 
thank you for watching this video. I really hope you liked it. And if you did, maybe you could leave a like and subscribe. Goodbye. Spider-Man, Spider-Man Does whatever a spider can Spins a web any size